Hi, I'm Naz here again. Um, I have a few comments on some things that I've been noticing in pop culture. Um, first things first, I'll start with Chris Brown and the Grammys. I don't really care too much about the Grammys, I don't really care too much about Chris Brown, but I do ta uh, take issue with domestic violence and I especially take issue when um, something that is a huge part of our culture in North America, which is Hollywood and the entertainment industry, um, decides that you know, it, it's not important to hold people accountable for domestic violence and that we can completely disregard the victim um, of, of domestic violence. Um, there's a lot, a lot of commentary already on this on this case, but uh, I think one of the best posts that I've seen so far is from HelloGiggles.com. Uh, I'm going to post the, art, uh, the blog post um, in the text part of this post, and the uh, title of the blog post is um, I'm not okay with Chris Brown performing at the Grammys, I'm not sure why you are. Uh, they, I think the, the author highlights some great points and, you know, already says what I want to say and I think a lot of people are saying, but I wanted to zero in on a couple key points that the author brings up. Um, the first one is this in really interesting quote from the Grammy producers. Um, this is the Grammy executive producer, Ken Ehrlich, and he says, uh, we're glad to have him back. I think people deserve a second chance. If you'll note, he has not been on the Grammys for the past few years, and it may have taken us a while to kind of get over the fact that we were the victim of what happened. Um, first of all, I didn't know that having ta taking a two-year hiatus uh, from the Grammys was uh, suddenly redemption and um, is, you know, a two-year hiatus from a stupid award show means that you know even even though you were convicted of beating somebody up beating your girlfriend up um that you know suddenly everything's okay and you don't have to deal with any more consequences apparently that's enough to hold you accountable for your actions um and just the the big issue that i take with that quote is the second part the idea that the grammy producers or the grammys in general were the victims of this whole thing um so let me get this straight. Chris Brown beats his girlfriend up and the Grammy producers feel that they were the ones victimized. That does a few things. First of all, it completely devalues the experience of the actual victim. In this case, it's Rihanna. It takes her, it takes the value away from her experience and it makes her experience unimportant. Um, you're not actually, you're, you know, you're not recognizing like the significance and the impact of, of what it means to be a victim of domestic violence and I think to call yourself the victim of, 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 of this is just one of the most absurd and quite frankly the most stupid statements I think the Grammy producers could have come out with like I don't even understand like someone with s m mere common sense wouldn't think that's okay to say I don't know why they thought that was okay to say and second also First, it, it takes away the experience from the from the actual victim. It devalues their experience and makes their experience seem unimportant because you're just throwing around the word victim. You're taking the word victim. You're using it in in the wrong context, and you you know, and that kind of takes away the meaning and the significance of that concept, the concept of a victim. Um, the, and second of all, I think it's the, the it's an interesting message that it sends out to the people who want to hold someone accountable for domestic violence. So, you know, Chris Brown, um, uh, convicted of domestic violence, or I'm not sure if he's convicted yet, but uh, caught beating his girlfriend up. Uh, people want to hold him accountable to his actions and, and make sure that he faces the consequences. So the Grammy producers um, give him a two-year hiatus, which is apparently consequence enough um, from the Grammys. And this, and holding him accountable for what he did is apparently an inconvenience and a burden to to the entertainment industry so basically um if you want someone to uh if you want to hold someone accountable you're you you as a person who want to want to be the, you as a person who wants to hold the person someone else accountable for their actions you're being an inconvenience you're being a burden you're victimizing somebody else so um, you know, let's devalue the experience of the victim. Let's uh, let's let someone get away on with basically um, not being held accountable for their actions and suffering very little consequence. And second of all, let's uh, let's uh, 
call out the people who want to hold someone like that accountable for their actions. That's it's apparently now burdensome. So you know, you can't speak out against domestic violence. If you're the victim of domestic violence, your experience doesn't matter. And if you are the perpetrator, whatever. You have it to your highest from the Grammys, that's redemption enough, apparently. Um, that's a really mixed, that's a stupid signal. That's a terrible message to be sending out to victims of domestic violence, and a terrible message to be sending out to women, and a terrible message to be sending out to people who want to hold other people accountable for their actions. Um, and the other thing this um, article highlights really well is the comments from um, other artists and other entertainers in the entertainment industry. She highlights, I think, three artists, things Mary J. Blige, um, and I think Carrie Underwood and Lindsay Lohan, it was in the article, and then their comments on the case. And, you know, they are what you can call neutral. I mean, they say things like, oh, you know, they're both really good people, they're both really nice people, they're young, they're beautiful, I, you know, their relationship isn't my business. Not gonna further comment. Um, I think there's a few issues, there are a few topics um, that, you know, you can either be neutral about, agree on, disagree on, and then I think there are a few issues that you either can disagree with it and condemn it, but I don't think you can be neutral, and instead of being neutral, you're actually being passive about it, and you're letting, and you're really saying that you, it, you don't care and that it's okay that this happened. Um, and I think when someone says, when, when you have those comments, I think you're really just being passive and you're just, you're not, because you're not condemning someone and you're not, and you're not holding someone accountable for what they did, you're, you're saying that it's okay to, that someone could get away with that. I'm sorry, but you could be the nicest fucking person on the planet, but if you're caught battering your, your spouse, if you're caught hitting anybody, hitting your girlfriend, um, over, uh, over anything, I don't care how nice you are. You you should be held accountable for what you did. You should suffer the consequences. You should be condemned for what you did. It's not okay. In what situation is domestic violence okay? This makes no fucking sense. Um, and one of the comments, uh, you know, the idea that, oh, this isn't my relationship. I can't, you know, I can't stand anything. It's their own business. So, you know, the issue of domestic violence apparently should stay between the, you know, the aggravator and, and the victim. It's not our job to step in and help anybody, apparently. It's not our job to go in and, and condemn the person who is a perpetrator or help the victim and protect the victim. You know, apparently this is okay and we can just stand on neutral, meaning passive, territory and just watch this happen, watch as this happens. Get a fucking backbone and fucking stand up for shit and if you know something's wrong, if you know domestic violence is, is wrong, say that it's wrong. And what's interesting is for people who did say that it was wrong or you know even at the slightest um, made comments against Chris Brown, they were complete they were the ones condemned. They were the ones that were you know um, asked to apologize. The article highlights Usher. There was another case where um, Chris Brown tweeted that um, the only thing that he wants to do tonight is plank a girl, and a, a news anchor commented, or he's either a news anchor or a comedian, but he commented um, on that tweet saying that, oh, don't you mean punch? And, you know, of course he had to, he received a lot of backlash on Twitter, a whole bunch of Chris Brown fans um, asked him to apologize, and he did apologize, but in a satirical way, and I thought it was really witty, and I'll post that in um, the text part of this too. But it's just really interesting that, you know, you either stay neutral, or again, like, I don't think that's being neutral, I think it's being passive, and I think, you know, if you're saying that it's okay that it happened, um, you can either do that, you can either support Chris Brown through his ordeal, apparently. Apparently he's going through hell. Um, and and if you do say anything against it, you have to apologize for what you said. As That's absolute nonsense. I think the entertainment industry and, and these entertainers, these artists, the Grammy producers, owe a huge fucking apology to women everywhere for the kind of message that they've been sending out, and a huge fucking apology to victims of domestic violence. This, I think, this is a complete mess, and, um, 
I'm really, really sorry that this is the kind of culture that we fostered. And, you know, this sends a really bad, like, that's an understatement, sends a really messed up message to women everywhere. Um, and so, yeah, I think th those are my comments on that, on that whole issue. Um, and the other thing is, it's interesting that, you know, someone like Chris Brown um, received a lot of defense for what he did and da da da. But, you know, a, like a week ago on the Super Bowl, someone like MIA, who apparently, because she flashed a middle finger on, on television, was asked to apologize and she received a lot of backlash. It's interesting to note in Hollywood um, who receives the black backlash and who doesn't. Um, and I, I don't understand why we're fucking, uh, you know, we're, um, having a complete shit over the fact that someone flashed a middle finger on, on TV and someone who, you know, is, who's, who's been convicted of domestic violence can go around and do a little happy dance on the stage in the Grammys. It makes no sense to me. Um, but I love MIA and I, I think she's awesome and I hope she keeps slashing middle fingers to everyone at the Super Bowl. Um, that's a side comment, completely irrelevant. Um, and so, yeah, that's that. And the other thing I wanted to just uh, comment on really briefly is the Real Men campaign, I guess it is. So this um, organization um, trying to stop human trafficking has this campaign with male celebrities. Um, male celebrities are holding up uh, poster boards that say, Real Men Don't Buy Girls. Now, I think that's a, that's a great thing. and I and I think there are a few issues though with it and it's specifically with the words they use and you know some of you may be like oh you're just reading too deep into this and da 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 but I think it's important to important things to be critical of first of all what does that mean real men don't buy girls opposed to what uh, what's a fake man I'm interested to know what what it is what defines a real man and so real men don't have to buy war girls because they can get some, they can get any, so oppose, so if you can't get girls, you're not a real man, is that what that says? And it's interesting that they use the word girls, and, you know, not just women, it's, you know, girls, and you assume that, you know, that's young girls, little girls, uh, why don't you just say women? Or why don't you just say people shouldn't buy people if you're if you're against human trafficking or that you know real people or you know people shouldn't traffic other people i don't understand like I, the, I think the terminology is really there's a lot of issues with it and um i think although they're trying to do something great they're missing a big fucking point and it's interesting you know what this you know doesn't include this this slogan it 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 disclude it you know doesn't include a lot of things so what do, what do you say about uh pimps and prostitutes what about sex workers in canada what do you say to that uh and yeah i'm, I'm curious to know what what a real man who isn't the real man and um what about male sex workers what about uh you know other people in the industry um that aren't there for their on their own will and, you know, ne aren't necessarily, uh, just girls. And it's, you know, and the idea of like, you know, you know, real men don't have to buy, buy sex that they can just get any, it also kind of, I think, um, you know, I think it, sorry, I think it kind of supports some, some misconceptions about the sex industry. I mean, there's a lot of there are a lot of parts of the sex industry where you know it is empowering for the, for the um, I guess the product seller, the, the sex worker, and um, yeah, I think there it takes away some of some of that as well. So I think you know, good try on the campaign, but you're missing a lot of important points, and I think the slogan has a lot of uh, troubling troubling things in, in terms of how it's been worded and, um, you know, looking closely at the words that are used, what the words mean, um, the kind of norms they're, they're further supporting and, um, what they don't include. So yeah, those are us. Uh,
a couple things that I've been noticing in pop culture, and I'd love to hear some feedback. Thanks.